All right, it is time for a top 10 list of what I have been watching. Let us wrap up the year. Hey everyone, it is Shannon and I'm super excited to be here today and to share with you the top 10 films that I watched in 2020. Um, I haven't done a film list like this maybe actually ever on my channel so this is a weird year to happen to be doing that but hey this is just a weird year so let's just roll with it. Um, so these are actually new to me films from 2020 or that I watched in 2020. They aren't 2020 releases. There is one that sometimes is considered a 2020 release but generally speaking they could be they there's a wide range in release dates for these ones they're mostly semi-recent but not exclusively um and yeah so they're just the 10 that i enjoyed the best this year they're all films that i gave either a four a four and a half or a five out of five to and also a heart on letterboxd um so ones that didn't get a heart did not make the list so sad so sad. Also, just to note, I am pre-filming this just a bit, so if there is any other films that I enjoyed that much um, that would have made the list, I will leave it in the description box below. Um, I don't tend to pre-film for end-of-the-year stuff, but I know that that end-of-the-year time and January I need off, so I decided to pre-film, so I will make an adjustment in the list below um, or in the description box below if, um, if there just happens to be a winner that sneaks up on me me at the end of this year. Speaking of, I am going to have some honorable mentions and they're basically <laughs> they're basically just films that I wanted to mention even though they don't quite meet the parameters. <laughs> And the first one, this is definitely the case because the first honorable mention I had, I actually watched at the very end of 2019, and that was Creed. This film was amazing. I just absolutely loved it. Um, it starts Michael B. Jordan and Sylvester Stallone. I just... It's a spinoff or continuation of the Rocky franchise. And it was one that I was very happily surprised that, I don't know if surprise is the right word, I was very happy that it really did live up to the hype. I remember when this came out and everyone talked about it and how amazing it was and I was like a little, you know, not sure because the Rocky films really are all over. Like, they hold a special place in my heart and I have seen most of them. I don't think I, I don't think I saw the Rocky, like the second one, the one, it must have been in the 2000s that came out called Rocky, was that what it was called? Rocky Balboa, that's what it was called. That one I haven't seen, but the rest of them I've seen. Um, and uh, this just really knocked it out of the park. I loved it. Michael B. Jordan is a great actor. Everything I have seen him in, he has been amazing. Everything else that I haven't seen him in, I've heard really good things about. So he should just go on my list of actors to watch everything that they've done. I think I just need to make that list. I think I've started it multiple times, but he needs to be on it because, my goodness, so good. Love this movie. Really does live up to the hype very happy that I watched it. And then there's two films that I watched this year that didn't quite make the parameters for my top 10, but I wanted to mention. The first up is No Consequences of Feminism. Um, this one is one from 1906. It is a silent film, and it is a gender swap, a gender role swap, uh, and uh, so it's showing, showing depicting a uh, society where women are like where it's a matriarchy basically um and I enjoyed it um but I didn't love it so I gave it four stars it's more of a like film history feminism important work as opposed to I enjoyed watching it it's like I learned from it it was interesting to see it made things clear that you don't think about that kind of stuff and I read it as a part of um reading the female gaze um and um because I'm reading and watching the films very slowly I think I just need to make a film list and put the book aside and then come back to the book once I've watched all the movies. Another film project in the works. There you go. Um, so yeah, and I think this one is public domain. I'm not totally sure. If it is, I will leave it down below um, uh, for you to watch. It is a short film. Uh, it's, I can't remember how many minutes long it is, um, but uh, yeah, so that was an interesting watch as well, as was the Lighthouse, which I did mention in a relatively recent-ish video. Um, this stars Robert Pattinson and William Defoe. It is very eerie. It is strange. It is art house to a T. <laughs> um, and I love the sound design. Oh, and it's black and white. And it's just 
odd and really intense and it's, it's a very it's not only unusual it is also goes some dark places so it's one that I can't widely recommend to everyone but it really had something special in it and um I really William Def Willem Dafoe's performance in it just it was probably the best performance I saw all year round um and I still think about certain scenes so and Robert Pattinson was really good but William the foe man he can hold the room he can hold the room he was so good so yeah but I didn't love it I actually only gave it a three and a half and no heart which is so no heart oh. but it was really something special so if you're into intense stuff or art house stuff or weird stuff it goes on the list for sure and I should again put Willem Dafoe on my list of actors to watch everything by because I think I've liked everything I've seen him in and he does a huge range of genres and stuff. So okay, now we're getting to the actual top 10. So as I mentioned before, these are films that rated four stars, four and a half stars, or five stars, plus a heart on Letterboxd. And we're starting with number 10. And that is Rampage with Dwayne Johnson. I couldn't believe it when I put together the list. And I was like, Rampage makes the list. Okay, I watched this very, very early in 2020. I don't remember it that well, like at all. I really like Dwayne Johnson. I'm gonna, I just like, I'm very clear about that. He is a lot of fun. And, um, I find him actually really inspiring, especially in terms of bodybuilding and working out. Like, he, he does the work, man. He does the work. And, um, yeah, and I enjoyed this. There's animals. I can't, but honestly, I gotta say, it has been so long, I can't actually even remember the plot of this at all. At all. But I remember that I did enjoy watching it, so my number 10 <laughs> is Rampage. <laughs> my number nine is Rocket Man. So this is the Elton John uh, biopic with Taron Edgerton, Edgerton, Edgerton. Um, and this was really good. I was surprised I'm not like a huge fan of Elton John. Like I think you just sort of know him and know his work through the media regardless. Um, so it was really interesting to see his life story, where he started, things that happened throughout the years. Um, I also really enjoyed uh, Jamie Bell in this. I did not, rec I don't think I recognized him throughout the entire film at all. Um, <laughs> so that was pretty amazing in and of itself. But there was, it was also pretty heartbreaking. Um, and um, there was a lot of challenge going like, and um, in this film as well on multiple levels. Um, but it was really good. And I'm really glad that I watched it. So um, yeah, so Rocket Man, yep. It really, it really won. Oh, another one. Ah, I, it Man number four, the finale with Donnie Yen. Ah, this was good. This is good. And I wasn't, I wasn't sure if we were getting another It Man film. Um, I rewatched the whole series um, in the lead up to this release. And then I was so happy that it ended up on like Hoopla. And so, because it came out theatrically, this is the one where it did come out, out theatrically, I think here in Toronto in 2020, early 2020 limited release. Um, but, um, but then it ended up on Hoopla. So I was like, yay, this is a martial arts, um, historical, I guess is the best way to describe it. Um, and it features the person who trained Bruce Lee. Um, and, but I will say one thing with this one is that there was less Bruce Lee in this one than I was expecting. Cause this one sort of ties the two stories together. Um, the other three films are, are historical with, uh, very little or no, uh, connection to Bruce Lee. And this one, I thought there would be more, but there, there wasn't as much as I was expecting, but I really loved it. I love Donnie Yen. He is amazing. He's an amazing martial artist, and I think he's a really great actor, and I've enjoyed everything that I've seen him in. I feel like this is a good cover. I did pick an alternate cover. There were a whole bunch that I thought were kind of misleading, um, but I thought this was also a really good poster. It's not English, but I think you get a sense of it. Um, he's just uh, such a wonderful presence, um, the, the portrayal of the character, um, and uh, just stood for a lot uh stood for good you know like <laughs> i think that's really part of what really um resonated with me about the story is standing up against um you know the bad guys in in, in this situation because it's a historical situation it is um actual people and often people that are being really horrible uh, especially in terms of looking down on people for who they are and i'm like no that's not okay so it's nice to see a story where someone stands up to that so i really appreciate that and the action is just like freaking phenomenal so <laughs> there's that too next up and th this was another big surprise we have to all the boys i loved before oh 
oh wow I picked a white one cover that's not I forgot that's not great so to all the boys I loved before this is based on the novel by oh does it have it here oh I can't remember it's a Netflix original and these are all well, here's another poster. Here, we'll go with that one. Um, and uh, I'll link down below the author who, whose name is escaping me right now. So this is a very sweet story, uh, a very cute story about a girl who writes a bunch of letters to all of the boys that she's loved, and then someone mails them. <laughs> And they're like throughout, she's a teenager, but they're like throughout her life. So all of a sudden people start popping up in her life, like <laughs> trying, trying to talk to her about this. And she's like, what's going on? I actually quite enjoyed the movie way more than the book. I didn't really enjoy the book. It made me realize that I'm not so, I like reading YA, especially high school drama stuff. I just feel a little old <laughs> to be reading that. But watching a movie was awesome. Like that was that was no problem at all. I also watched it with my sisters. So that was really fun to watch something new that we hadn't seen together. And uh, and just was really like a fun romantic, nice light romantic comedy. But also like there were some feels in there. Like this really is about relationships and how you treat people and and you know what you're going to do about things if you're going to do something about things so I really appreciated that and I saw it from uh, much uh, I enjoyed it much more than the book I thought the book I just I didn't connect with it and there were a couple other things that I'm like this is so obvious how come no one's saying anything about this but in the film I didn't feel that way at all there is a sequel there's the book series is a trilogy um, and the second film has been already adapted uh, I think it's PS I still love you that's what the things P.S. I still love you. Jenny Han, that's the author. So yeah, so that was a big surprise. That was a big surprise. Also another surprise, another book to film adaptation is Odd Thomas. Yay, with Anton Yelchin. This one I mentioned before in my book to film catch up video. Did I do that? Oh, there was, I tried, oh, my vlog was such a fail for that book to film catch up week and so many of the movies I watched I didn't enjoy but this was one that I the last one that I watched and I loved it oh my god so this is based on the novel by Dean Koontz it's an urban fantasy horror story about odd who can sort of see things that people generally can't see things that are sort of like between uh, the real world and like afterlife kind of stuff so they're sort of paranormally type things but it has a fair amount of humor in it, and uh, he's such a great character, and it's a great performance. Another awesome Willem Dafoe <laughs> role in this one. He was a, a supporting actor as the uh, odds, the, his uh, connection to the law enforcement. Um, and this is just really sort of witty and quirky, although it is quite violent. So if that's not your, if that if that's a no, then this is unfortunately a no. But I really enjoyed it. So that was my number four. And then we have the next one. This one I have actually physical copy of Fast and Furious. Okay, so this is what's the title? I always forget. Fast and Furious prevents presents Hobbs and Shaw. So this is the the first installment of the Fast and Furious that's sort of like outside the Fast and Furious. So it's not like Fast and Furious number like whatever. It's like a different thing. And I loved it. Oh my god, it was so much fun. Mayhem action. Uh, Idris Elba, <laughs> Dwayne Johnson, Jason Statham, like, like it is just all fun. And I don't tend to love car scene, <laughs> like, chase movies. So I think it's so funny that I love the Fast and Furious series. Like, really, truly love it. But I do. I really do. It was, it, it definitely, I will say this one was a bit ridiculous at times. It really goes the extra mile. And you're kind of like, mm. But I don't think you're necessarily supposed to take it as realistic. <laughs> I loved it so much. Oh my gosh, I, I thought my phone was on D&D. &D. So sorry about that if you heard that. No, we won't, we won't hear things like that anymore. So those are actually all the ones I gave a four. So now we go to the ones I gave a four and a half to. And um, the first up is another one that I've talked about before, and that is The Vast of Night. Um, this is available on Amazon Prime here in Canada. This is one that was recommended to me, and it was also recommended to me not to look up what it's about, which is something that I would also recommend. This was a very fascinating, interesting, wildly just engaging 
curiously driven uh, movie. I think it's in black and white. I'm trying to remember. I think it's in black and white. So it's, and it's a shorter film. I think it's just under an hour and a half. I thought it was great. I really, really thought it was great. And um, I have not heard many people talk about this one. So if you enjoy film and like to not know what something is before going into it, I would definitely say give this one a chance. I am really, really glad that I did. Um, along the same lines, this one was actually recommended to me by Sean from Media Assault. And that is You Were Never Really Here, starring Joaquin Phoenix. Holy smokes. Thank you, Sean. This film was extraordinary. Um, I don't even really know how to describe it. Um, it. It was quite violent. So again, this is one that I can't re recommend to everyone. But it was a formidable performance by Joaquin Phoenix. It's a tough topic. Um, he sort of is available for hire um, for, I think, I don't know if it was always, I don't, like, he helps people <laughs> when it doesn't look like they can get help through normal circumstances or avenues. I don't think I want to say too much more on that because I appreciated not knowing what it was about, although it was really intense, so, but the performance, wow. I forgot that I watched this this year. I watched it really, really early in the year, and it it was just, it was really good. It was really good. And it is a bit more in the art house vein of things in terms of the pacing and stuff like that, but I loved it. And Walking Phoenix was amazing. So it was a really great watch. So thank you again to Sean. Okay, next up is my number two. My second favorite film of the year is Ivanhoe. Yes, we're back to book-to-film adaptations. So this one is from 1952, so this is one of the older ones on the list, and I loved it. I absolutely loved it. It was, the performances were great. Um, I understood the story so much more. From reading the book, I was very, quite, quite confused, and I read it a couple years ago. So getting to see the story on film and getting to see it much more clear and seeing what the messages were a lot more clear. Also now I've read enough about sort of this time period that I get a sense of what the history was in terms of what was going on at that time. This is another sort of fight the good fight kind of thing. Um, and, uh, you know, standing up against uh, tyranny, I guess, actually, that'd be the best... I think tyranny would, well, it might be going a little far, but maybe not. Um, and there's um, lists. So there's like, you know, there's also like, it's very adventure-y, um, like the like uh, uh, jousting competitions in the midst of all of this intrigue and romance and adventure and, you know, fighting the good fight. And I just loved it. I loved it. I loved it. And my one soul, five out of five, I only had one this year that wasn't a rewatch. I don't know what's going on. I don't know if that means I'm a harsher critic or I just haven't been watching enough, but this, I and I watched this right at the beginning of the year, like January, but it just, just was so good. And that is A Star is Born. And so this is from 2018. I, you know, it's a redux. It's been done at least twice, maybe three times before. Um, and uh, this version stars Lady Gaga and Bradley Cooper. It is heartbreaking. It is beautiful. The music is amazing. Uh, I've listened to the soundtrack so many times, and it is just extraordinary. And I'm surprised because I have watched earlier versions, and I was a little hesitant going in. It has heavier themes, um, and um, but this just really knocked it out of the park. I loved it so much. It talks a lot about art and process and connection and people and relationships and it's just, it's got all of the things, like all of the tick boxes. It also reminds me that for me a priority really should be on works that deal with the performing arts because both this and Rocket Man are at least were two that were about the performing arts and which is something I know that I enjoy. So I, I should be more attentive to that when choosing uh, both film and TV, uh, that of course, I like things about art, but generally speaking, um, performing arts is out of the arts, uh, the one we tend to get, I think, the most films on. I don't know. Is that true? 
hmm, share your favorite film that's about art. I would love to hear it because I love art. And um, yeah, and so this is about, if you don't know, this is sort of about a rising star. I don't want to say, I don't want to say what the plot is, but it's about a rising star who connects with someone who's more established in the industry. Um, and, but there are challenges along the way. I'll leave it at that. So there you go. <sighs> that was my top 10 plus some honorable mentions. I would love to know what your favorite film this year was. I really, I, I'm surprised. I only saw 40 new films this year, which is quite low for me. I did a lot of rewatching and um, I am going to set some specific film goals next year. Well, more Willem Dafoe, <laughs> more <laughs> um, Michael, oh my gosh, Michael from the, uh, Michael B. Jordan at the very least. Uh, Tilda Swinton, uh, those are all, and Donnie Yen. I don't watch anything with Donnie Yen in it. Um, so I had, definitely have some favorite uh, actors and um, and some and more performing arts works at the at the minimum. But I do have some more specific goals. I'm gonna wait till the new year to to hash them all out. Um, but yeah, I definitely want to watch more film in 2021 and probably do more videos about film in 2021. Um, but for now, let me know what was your favorite of 2020. All right, thank you so much for watching.